Well, hi, boys and girls. It's Mr. Wassman, and today, once again, we're going to be looking at the concept of symmetry. We're in our home links, Unit 8, Lesson 4, and the first five problems have some geometric figures. Now, some of these are just polygons, and other figures are built from many different polygons, okay? And your job is to find the lines of symmetry. Now, let's take a look at problem number two, actually. As you can see, we have a hexagon. And not just any kind of hexagon, but what we call an equilateral hexagon. Equilateral polygons have sides that are the same measurement and angles that are the same measurement. When you were a kindergartner and being introduced to shapes, you might have been shown this shape and been told that's a triangle because it's got three sides and three corners. Now this equilateral triangle can be divided into three lines of symmetry. The first one that's obvious is I start at the vertex at the top and draw a vertical line that splits the uh, side that is the base of the triangle in half at the midpoint. And then what would happen is I would then take another line starting at the, uh, the left vertex and then cut it in half by splitting the, mid, uh, the, the opposite side in half. And I would do the same thing along the right. Okay. Now, later on in your school career, we learned that there are many different kinds of rectangles, like this one right here. This is considered to be a right angle triangle. So, right triangle. It's also scalene because a scalene triangle has three different sides, each of different lengths. That means that each of the angles are different measurements, too, which means. I cannot split this thing in half and get two mirror images. Like if I try to do it from the top, I'd just be tracing along this one side. That's not, that's not uh, symmetrical. If I try to cut it from the left, you'll see that this side on the bottom takes up a lot more space than this side right here. Okay, That's not a mirror image. Okay, so when we have equilateral shapes, okay, those equilateral shapes will have as many lines of symmetry as they do sides. Okay, so this hexagon has six lines of symmetry, and there's two types. There are lines of symmetry that split it in half, cutting through the sides, like so. I'm going to draw a line of symmetry vertical from top to bottom, okay? And if I can do it from th these two sides, I can cut it from these two sides here and these two sides here. And all those lines of symmetry, they meet in the center in this little midpoint right here, okay? But then I can also split my shape in half using lines of symmetry going from angle to angle like this. So I can, because of the nature of this shape, because it has six sides or an even number of sides, it also has an even number of angles, that means I can split this hexagon in half for lines of symmetry, uh, either starting or stopping at the angles or starting and stopping in the middle of the sides. Now again, that's only true for equilateral Hexagons. Now, I can make another hexagon look something like this. Hexagons are defined as closed shapes that have six sides and six angles. This, too, is technically a hexagon. But again, when you're kindergartner, first grader, second grade, grader, being introduced to the different polygons in geometry, you usually get to just see the equilateral ones, that's the easiest ones for our brains to process, okay? This, too, is a hexagon, but it is not going to be as symmetrical. Matter of fact, it only has two lines of symmetry, okay? I can cut it in half vertically, like so, and I can cut it in half horizontally, like that, okay? By cutting it vertically, uh, I get, basically... A pentagon, or a shape that has five sides, okay? 
But if I cut it horizontally, the top and bottom halves, they're no longer pentagons, they're like trapezoids, like so. So because they are not exactly equilateral, that means I don't get as many lines of symmetry. Okay, So when I'm looking at different shapes, i got to think to myself, what is this figure made from? Are those polygons symmetrical by themselves? And the way that they are constructed, do they give me, uh, do they give me a chance to create mirror images of one another? Like for number three, we have squares. And by themselves, squares are symmetrical in a number of ways. Here's a square, and I can cut a square in four different ways, four lines of symmetry. Because, again, as an equilateral rectangle, that's what a square is, uh, it's got a line of symmetry that goes vertically, horizontally, and then two diagonals, like so. But when I place all these five squares against each other in this pattern, I have created basically a shape that only has one line of symmetry. Okay. Now again, I'm going to find that line of symmetry by dividing uh, one of the squares into two symmetrical pieces. But if I try to go vertically, like so, this side of my uh, shape is not going to be the same as this side. Okay. So that doesn't work. Same goes if I try to divide it horizontally. So the, really, the only way I can divide this shape into a, uh, two symmetrical sides is if I cut it diagonally right here. Okay, And so basically what that gives me are two squares and then half of a square that has been made into a triangle. So uh, on this 40 to 5 degree uh, diagonal, like so, I now have a pattern of two and a half squares here, and I've got two and a half squares right here. Okay, you can kind of see those two shapes. Okay, if I were to fold this shape in half along this red line of symmetry, that would create uh, an image that would fold upon itself. Okay. Again, one of the ways you can test symmetry is if, if something's on paper, if you were to fold it along that line of symmetry, do the two halves line up exactly, or does one part of the figure stick out past the other part? Is there any overlap or not? Okay. And that's all we're doing here in this uh, activity. We're looking for lines of symmetry, particularly trying to think about it in terms of equilateral shapes and the way that certain geometric figures are constructed from equilateral shapes. Okay? Now lastly, down at the bottom, we have some practice with some multiplication of fractions and whole numbers. Let's take a look at number 9, shall we? 4 times 7 tenths. Now again, when we multiply fractions and whole numbers, I'm only going to be looking at the numerator of the fraction. Okay, So instead of saying 7 tenths, Let's say seven bananas. I'm multiplying four groups, and each group has seven bananas in them. Okay, Four times seven is 28. That would give me 28 bananas, right? But instead of bananas, okay, I'm uh, multiplying four groups of seven tenths. Okay, So instead of 28 bananas, I have 28 tenths. Okay? Now, an improper fraction isn't a bad answer, but it's not the easiest answer to think about. Okay? When I think about tenths, I always think about dimes. Well, basically, any time I think about math, I think about money, or how does it apply to money, because math is money. But in particular, when we're dealing with fractions that are out of ten or a hundred parts, that easily lends itself to money. So if I had four groups of seven dimes, and I ended up with 28 dimes, how much money is that? Well... I can figure that out by just taking my total number of dimes, 28, and divide it into groups of 10, because 10 dimes is the same as $1, right? Well, 10 times 1 is 10, 10 times 2 is 20, 10 times 3 is 30, so I know I don't have $3 worth. The best I can do is $2, right? 
because 2 times 10 is 20. So I can get two groups of 10, which means $2, which leaves me with 8 tenths left over, or 8 parts. 2 and 8 tenths. So 28 tenths can be uh, reconfigured into two holes with 8 tenths left over. Now again, if I was talking money, $2 and 8 dimes would be $2.80. Later on in this unit, we're going to be learning, again, how to convert fractions and decimals. And again, every time we talk about money, if we're given a fraction of a dollar, we always want to convert that to its decimal equivalent, because that's how we represent money in this country. $2.80 is the same as saying 2 and 8 tenths of a dollar. Okay? Well, that's all for me, friends. Uh, if you're still left scratching your chin thinking, I, I, I don't get the symmetry stuff, or I, I'm still a little confused when I multiply fractions. I, I just want to multiply those denominators. I don't know why. If you're confused, if you're stuck, well, what you need to do is you need to talk to your math teacher. Okay? They will set you on the right track. They will help you where I cannot as a uh, recording as most likely being viewed on YouTube or embedded in a Canvas video somewhere. Uh, I am a one-directional teacher right now. I just give the information out. I cannot take any feedback back in. So you need to find yourself a real, live, living, breathing person to talk to if you've got questions. Okay? I hope this video was helpful in some respect. And until we talk again, friends, have a good day. Thanks.